And in my particular case, I didn't wait till somebody gave me a job or something. I went and created a job for myself, freelance photographer. And what I did, anybody else can do. In the garden of my heart, I looked and found you there. Rainy weather. Hello there. Welcome back. These days, Ouija wouldn't be considered to be a hack journalist. Most critics would consider him to be an artist of significance. His work has gained value mainly because over time, his commercially motivated practice has been reassigned as art. When one scratches a bit deeper, the thinking is that perhaps the true artist was Diane Arbus, and her predecessor or mentor, Ouija, was an accidental artist. He did take a lot of average to bad newspaper images, but when he got it right, his work took on a monumental status. Many of his images are beautifully framed and sensitively conceived. He captured the bizarre and the macabre with spontaneity, producing images of extraordinary power. He was ruthless in his pursuit of getting his picture, as well as moulding his public persona. He has been called a voyeur, but he sometimes complained about the public's thirst for gore and high drama. They say that the camera never lies, but it can stretch the... Asha Felig, or Ouija, was born in what is now called Ukraine in 1899. When he was 10, the Felig family emigrated to Manhattan, where they shared a rat-infested Lower East Side tenement. His parents changed his name there from Asha to Arthur, and he discovered his life passion at the age of 14, when a street photographer produced a picture of him. He was fascinated by this result, and he bought a tintype photographic kit and left school. He came up with an idea to produce portraits that even the poorest family couldn't resist. He bought a pony and called him Hypo, after the darkroom chemical. And he would go about finding kids and he was fastidious about washing their faces and then putting them on the pony and then selling it to the parents for a few cents. Unfortunately, Hypo didn't earn his keep and he moved on to news photography. He began working freelance for various New York newspapers and agencies while taking on odd jobs one involved taking pictures of coffins for a catalogue. Another involved squeegeeing excess water off photographic darkroom prints at the New York Times. The nickname Squeegee Boy eventually morphed into Ouija, a better but probably untrue story which Ouija himself promoted was that the name was derived from his supposed supernatural ability to appear so soon after a murder or a fire broke out. The comparison was to the mysterious Ouija board. His favorite camera was the clunky 4x5 speed graphic. The invention in 1925 of the flash bulb made it possible for him to take unposed photographs at night and indoors. And this became central to his practice. He was completely self-taught and knew nothing about art techniques. He used the same flash bulb and he set his lens aperture on f16 for almost all of his pictures. And he typically shot from two distances, six feet for faces and ten feet for both groups photos and crime scenes. He set up shop in a shabby apartment right down the street from police headquarters. There he installed a police radio and a fire department alarm bell. In his 38 Chevy, he also installed a police radio and he had a portable darkroom so that he was able to get the edge on delivering prints to papers ahead of his competition. He didn't hold back on bribing the police into giving him private access to what was known as the perp walk. That's when the arrested suspect was led in handcuffs from the police van to the station house. Most importantly, he didn't have family or a steady job. Those who knew him described him as a chauvinist with bad hygiene who spent too much time at brothels. 
All he cared about was taking his hard-edged news pictures. The more he took them, the better his instincts became for capturing slices of criminal life and death. Eventually, he managed to break away from the pack of freelance photographers, and he took on the name Ouija. After 10 years of working through the night on the New York City streets, Ouija published his first book, Naked City. His manner was thought to be coarse and vulgar, but he was extremely sensitive to the plight of the working class. Working for the PM Daily Paper, he developed the human interest aspect of his work. He was one of the paper's stars. He would write the stories that appeared alongside his pictures, under the title of Ouija's Own Story. He constructed his own legend and delighted in his own fame. It's thought that through his association with Andy Warhol, he influenced the artist to take on the idea of combining the roles of artist and celebrity. Many of Ouija's iconic shots focus on spectators. In October 1941, a small town gangster was shot at night near a schoolyard. And in addition to photographing the body, Ouija shot the crowd of children pushing one another out of the way so that they could see the dead body. This photograph reveals the dark side of human behavior. Ouija titled it, Their First Murder. This photograph Ouija called, I cried when I took this picture. It shows two survivors of a tenement fire in Brooklyn. The mother and daughter are looking up hopelessly as another daughter and her young baby are trapped in the flames. This photo ran in PM as well as in Life magazine, and it's one of his most popular images. The critic, is what he called it, was shot on opening night in 1939 outside the Metropolitan Opera House. The ragged, homeless woman is staring at the two well-dressed socialites. Many famous photographers have been influenced by Ouija, but none so much as Diane Arbus. She took on his themes of nudists, freaks, circus performers, and street people. She owned a number of Ouija's books and cultivated his straight flash technique. And this technique emphasizes the ugly and vulnerable aspects of her subjects. It also gives her photographs a feeling of immediacy, even though many of her photographs were staged. By the time Ouija shot the critic, he was already a minor celebrity. He had been the subject of a photo feature in Life magazine and his first exhibition, Murder is My Business, attracted a lot of media and public attention. The inclusion of his work in two MoMA exhibitions led to the publication of his 1945 book, Naked City, which sold a massive 14,000 copies within six months of its release. Ouija was on a roll and he wanted to try his luck as a photographer and filmmaker in Hollywood. But soon after he arrived, he quickly realized what a strange culture Hollywood was. He was deeply critical and cutting about stardom and he would capture images of the stars in very unflattering moments or from unusual angles. He also created a kaleidoscope lens to distort the images of the stars. This was his way of humbling them. After five years, Ouija had experienced enough of the glitz of Hollywood and returned to New York in 1952. He began exploring the concept of what he called art photography. By then, the city's murder rate had dropped, and because of urban renewal, his favorite haunts, the old-fashioned tenements, were being demolished. His star was in decline, and he was forced to scratch out a living producing fluffy human interest pictures. Probably the last highlight of his career was when director Stanley Kubrick hired him to take pictures on the set of his classic Dr. Strangelove. Largely forgotten, Ouija died of a brain tumor five years later. He regularly noted Ouija's influence on his work, even after he became famous. The lead actor in this film, Peter Sellers, also adapted Ouija's German accent for the role. 
More recently, Ouija was the inspiration for Jake Gyllenhaal's role in the film Nightcrawler. Dylan Hall plays Lou, who's way up there on the autism spectrum. He prowls the streets of LA at night, hunting for photogenic bloodshed. Back at the newsroom where he works, the mantra is, if it bleeds, it leads. Thanks for joining me for this video on Ouija, or as he liked to refer to himself, the world's greatest photographer. See you next time. Cheers.